Do you know how to control the cue ball when going across the table off a ball close to the side rail? This video covers a system that can help you plan and execute many types of shots like this, where precise cue ball control is important. Let's start with an excerpt from my pocket hangers video that demonstrates some useful ball hit fraction reference directions. These are taken from the Video Encyclopedia of Pool Shots video series. When you slow roll the cue ball parallel to a rail with a half ball hit on a hanger, the cue ball typically heads along a diagonal away from the pocket toward the opposite side. And when you shoot along a diagonal at 45 degrees, the cue ball heads roughly along the rail. The exact action of these shots will vary some with conditions, but they are fairly reliable. On this table, shooting from a diamond above the side pocket sends the cue ball parallel to the rail. This also works in the other direction, shooting from a diamond below the side. VEPS includes many other hanger reference directions. Here are a few more. A slow roll half ball hit from the table center heads to the center of the head rail. And a slow roll quarter ball hit from the table center heads along the rail. A slow roll half ball hit from the head spot heads to the corner. And a slow roll quarter ball hit from the head spot should head back to the head spot. The system presented in this video is based on the four diamond shift across the table resulting from a half ball hit on a ball close to the side rail. As we will see, knowing how to accurately control cue ball direction on shots like this is a powerful technique. Here's the alignment for the half ball hit, with the center of the cue ball aimed right through the edge of the object ball, shooting parallel to the short rail and perpendicular to the long rail. Again, with a slow rolling hit, the cue ball shifts up four diamonds across the table. Obviously, with a shot like this, trying to get shape on the eight after the final stripe, we wouldn't want to hit a slow rolling half ball hit. To avoid the scratch, you could use slower speed, but you wouldn't want to come up too short or go long and scratch. By adding side spin instead, you could easily go above the side. or below. I will cover side spin effects more later. You could also just hit the object ball thinner than half ball to come up short of the four diamond shift. Here are some other game situation examples showing the usefulness of the system. With this nine ball layout, the four diamond shift is perfect for a game winning carom shot. Here, the same line is perfect for an eight ball breakout shot. Here, a touch of right spin shifts the line up table a little to get through traffic for shape on the 8. And the same line is perfect for this effective 9 ball safety. Now let's look at the effect of speed changes. Again, a slow rolling cue ball shifts up 4 diamonds across the table. At slower speed, where the cue ball doesn't make it across the table, the line goes shorter than the reference direction. And at faster speeds, the cue ball goes long of the reference. Here's a game situation example where using slightly faster speed is perfect to break out the stripe cluster. Now let's see how the system also works for hits on balls not hanging in the corner. Hitting a ball close to the cushion by the first diamond still results in a four diamond shift across the table, going one diamond above the side pocket. With the object ball at the second diamond, the cue ball goes two diamonds above the side. The system also works in the other direction. Shooting at the side pocket hanger goes four diamonds to the corner. When the four diamond shift sends the cue ball into a short rail, the extra diamonds mirror back to the long rail. Here, the four diamond shift would send the cue ball one diamond past the corner, so the cue ball comes back one diamond above the corner. And this shot shifts up two diamonds. I used a little too much speed on that one, so it went a little long. But results will depend a little on table conditions, so it is important to practice a wide range of shots to develop a feel for what speeds work for the half ball hit. And sometimes, a hit slightly thinner than half ball might be required. Remember, speed has a big effect. With more speed, the cue ball goes longer.
From this position, the slow roll half ball hit would go three diamonds beyond the corner, so it reflects three diamonds up table. The system can also be adjusted for cases where the object ball is off the side rail. Remember, with the object ball close to the side rail, the cue ball shifts four diamonds across the table. For each diamond the object ball is from the side rail, the cue ball shifts an additional diamond. So in this case, the cue ball would head one diamond past the corner, so it goes one diamond above. When the object ball is farther from the rail, more speed is required to hold the line. With the object ball two diamonds from the side rail, the cue ball goes two diamonds past the four diamond target. In this case, two diamonds above the corner. Again, more speed is required when the object ball is farther from the side rail. At slower speed, the cue ball curves forward too soon, causing the cue ball to come up well short of the expected target. Here's another example. With a slow roll half ball hit close to the rail, the cue ball shifts up four diamonds across the table. And with the object ball a diamond out from the rail, and with a little more speed, the cue ball shifts up an additional diamond. Now let's look at the effects of approach angle changes. Remember, when the cue ball heads perpendicular to the side rail, the cue ball shifts four diamonds across the table, in this case a diamond above the side pocket. For every half diamond the approach angle is shifted, the cue ball shifts by approximately one diamond across the table. Here, the half diamond shift sends the cue ball about a diamond longer. Again, you need to practice on a given table to see how it responds and to decide if a thinner hit is required or not. A half diamond angle shift in the other direction sends the cue ball a diamond short into the side. Shooting from an angle shift a full diamond up table sends the cue ball two diamonds shorter, in this case a diamond below the side. Now let's look closer at the effects of side spin. Again, let's start with the four diamond shift reference shot with the tip at 12 o'clock relative to an analog clock face. Each hour of tip position changes the shift across the table by about a diamond. With the tip at about 11 o'clock, the side spin sends the cue ball about a diamond short, although the reverse spin kills the speed, limiting what can be done with this type of shot. With the tip at about 1 o'clock, the cue ball goes about one diamond longer than the side. With the tip at about 2 o'clock, the cue ball goes about two diamonds longer than the side. With the tip at about 3 o'clock, the cue ball goes about three diamonds longer. And with the tip at about 4 o'clock, with slow enough speed for drag to make the cue ball roll before reaching the object ball, the cue ball goes about four diamonds longer than the side to the top left corner. Now let's look at the effect of ball hit fraction changes. Remember, a half ball hit shifts four diamonds across the table. A quarter ball hit instead shifts three diamonds across the table. An eighth ball hit shifts two and a half diamonds. And an even thinner hit, about one twelfth, shifts two diamonds. Hits fuller than half ball are less predictable and the cue ball loses significant speed, making these types of shots less useful for cue ball control across the table. Here's a three quarter ball hit as an example. All the effects we have seen can be used in combination based on shot layout and requirements. Here's a nine ball example where the eight ball allows only about an eighth ball hit on the five. If shooting parallel to the end rail, that would send the cue ball two and a half diamonds up table. 
but the hit is angled by a half diamond, which would send the cue ball one diamond lower at one and a half. But by adding side spin at two o'clock on the cue ball, I can send the cue ball two diamonds farther up the rail to get the breakout. That gives me a shot at the six for a good chance at the runout. If you want to see many more examples of how to combine effects, along with how to use formulas to calculate the shots, see the three cushion billiards videos linked in the video description. I hope the system and adjustments presented in this video help you better control the cue ball when going across the table. I want to thank Matt from North Aurora, Illinois for encouraging me to do this video. Good luck with your game from Dr. Dave.